happened? Oh, it's so good to see you. It's been, oh, how many months? Well, I moved in May, and it's October, so I guess that's five months. And it's so good to finally be able to hang out again. So, how was the move? Do you like your new place? <laughs> you have to tell me everything. <laughs> I will, I will. Why don't we go sit down at that table in the corner? Sure. So, tell me, is your new place everything you wanted? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good. Great. The extra office space is really nice. But... Um, no, it, it's nothing. Just... Uh, well, it is an older building, so there are some bugs. Bugs? Silverfish, I think. Oh, hon, that's not so bad. <laughs> There's lots of ways to keep them out of your place. Yeah, and I guess having all those moving boxes still probably doesn't help. So you're not all settled in then? Mm, not yet. There's still a few boxes I have to go through, but the place is coming along nicely. I'm glad. I know how cramped you are feeling in your old apartment. <laughs> it's, it's just a shame you're so far away now. Oh, I know. I wish I could afford a bigger place in the city, but honestly, the transit isn't too bad. What do you have to take? On the weekdays, I can take the City Center Express. It has a terrible schedule, though. Only runs early in the mornings and ends service early in the evenings. Ugh, that's unfortunate. Maybe it's time to finally get a car? Uh, another expense. <laughs> but yeah, I'll, I'll think about it. So far the train has been alright, but it would be nice to have a backup in case I miss it. I don't know how you do it. 12 hour workday with the transit? It's pretty exhausting. But I am definitely much happier in this new apartment. Then how is Marcus settling in? Oh, he loves it too. Having the extra office space to work from home has really helped improve his mood. Hmm. Sounds like everything is finally coming together for you. It is. Once I build up my savings again, things will be perfect. But, enough about me. What's been happening with you? I've been keeping up with your channel, Stacy's Station. <laughs> You've got quite a lot of followers now. Thank you, it's been a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying this new true crime segment my social media manager suggested. My follower count nearly doubled, too. Ah, uh, people love macabre content. Though, I'm definitely more partial to your travel vlogs. Uh, honestly, those were so much work to produce. Yeah, getting paid to travel is great, but I was hardly ever home. After a while, you just miss sleeping in your own bed, you know? Um, not really. <laughs> <laughs> right. The furthest you've traveled is to the airport to pick me up that one time. When are you going to treat yourself to a vacation? I can't. I have work. Hun, you get two weeks vacation. Why not take advantage of that? Uh, but if I go on vacation, then the team is short-staffed, and then they fall behind. And then I would come back to two weeks' worth of work on top of what I am already expected to do. <sighs> you need to stop overworking yourself. We are getting older, and before you know it, you'll be too tired to travel. I'm 26, Stacy. I still have time. You say that now, but soon you'll be saying, I'm only 40, I'm only 50, oh, I'll travel when I retire, and then you'll be dead. Gee, thanks for that cheery thought. <laughs> I'm just looking out for you. It's so easy to get caught up in work and responsibilities that you actually forget to live. Uh, I'm living. Well, technically, yeah, you are, but what have you done recently that's made your heart race with excitement? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that's, that's what I thought. Sure, my life isn't as glamorous or exciting as yours, but I'm happy. Are you? I am. All right, that's all I really want from you, Rosalind. So, uh, that true crime stuff you're working on? Uh, what made you interested in that? Honestly, it was a marketing ploy. A lot of people were commenting on the fact that I did a lot of superficial videos. You know, makeup, travel, food. My fans wanted me to do something deeper. 
And everyone has been fascinated by the Red River Reaper case lately, so true crime was an obvious choice. Red River Reaper? Oh, wait. You don't mean our Red River? Like, the river on the edge of town? Oh, hon. What? Between the move and work, I've just been so busy. Well, you're gonna have to watch my newest episode then to get caught up. I go over everything we know about the case so far. I love you, Stace, but that stuff is too grim for me. Oh, it's terrible, of course, but you honestly should make yourself aware of what's been happening, Rosalind. <sighs> what do you mean? Three women have been killed in the past three months. Women around our age. Educating yourself on the case might be a good way to... I don't know... Prevent yourself from being another victim? Can... Can we talk about something else, please? Yes, of course. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. I just worry about you. I'm a big girl, Stace. I can take care of myself. No, but... You didn't even know there was a killer in town, love. You need to be extra cautious, especially if you're transiting late at night. Nothing is going to happen, Stacy. There's tons of people around. Right, okay, that's good. But I'll watch your episode on the train, because you are right. I should know what's going on. Don't forget to like and leave a comment. <laughs> <laughs> You're terrible. Can't blame a girl for marketing herself. All aboard! Last call for the last train of the evening. Last call for the City Center Express bound for shit, Port High. Shit, shit. Looks like we got a straggler. <laughs> what do you want to do, Dan? Wait or ruin someone's day? She looks like she's already having a bad day. Let's give her a bit of a break. <laughs> You're a lot nicer than me. <laughs> Everyone is nicer than you, Garrett. It's all right. We're holding the train for you. Thanks. Hurry on up to your seat, okay? Yeah. Sorry. All right. Doors are closing. She was kind of cute, right? Hmm? I didn't notice. Why does that not surprise me? Go make sure everyone is seated. I have to get this rust bucket back on schedule. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, that's my seat there. Could you, uh... Oh, sure. Uh, thanks. No worries. Oh, miss! You dropped your headphones. Oh, thank you. Gonna need these. <laughs> Hello, lovelies! It's time for another episode of Stacy Station, True Crime Edition. Today, we are going over the case that has been on everyone's mind these past few months. The Red River Reaper. Here's what we know. A third victim has been found. The young woman was discovered earlier today in the shallow waters of Red River. The autopsy report revealed signs of torture. She was only 27 years old. Stacy Station, can you tell me if there's any connection between the victims? We have been unable to determine a connection at this time.
detective. Do you have any idea who might be committing these murders? What we can assure you is we are doing all we can. We will bring the Red River Reaper to justice. Hey, darling. Welcome home. Hi. And how was your day? It was... interesting. Interesting? Yeah. Stacy met me for lunch, which was nice. And <laughs> how is she doing? Oh, you know, same old Stacy. Peppy and overbearing. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. She did tell me about some recent murders. Oh, you mean the Reaper? You've heard of them. Of course. It's all over the news and there's posters everywhere. Wait, did you not know? No. This is the first I've heard about them. How? <laughs> now you're starting to sound a lot like Stacy. <laughs> Sorry, I just thought you knew. Well, I do now. Pretty freaky, huh? And... Of course. The cops have no clue who's doing it. Yeah. I have to admit, Stacy's Reaper video definitely scared me. Oh, it's okay, babe. I'll protect you. <laughs> mm, my hero. So, what are we having for dinner? <laughs> Why, my famous spaghetti and meatballs, of course. Ah, I see. What? What's with that tone? What tone? You know what I'm talking about. I love your spaghetti, Marcus. But we did have it last night. And the night before that. Uh, I know. I'm sorry, Rose. I haven't had time to get to the grocery store. But you know what? Why don't we tuck this into the fridge for tomorrow and, I don't know, order in a pizza? Extra cheese. <laughs> All the cheese you'd like. Mm, now you're talking. Mwah. How's your report going? Well, uh, got a few more tests to run, but I'm hoping it will be done by the end of the weekend. And uh, what was the report on again? Uh, it's just your standard air survey. Right. Air. The air reports. The report for air. I'm just making sure the river's healthy. Though, things have been a little more complicated with the recent murders. The police have been patrolling the riverbanks, looking for any clues as to where the bodies are being dumped. Sections that I need to test are roped off. <sighs> it's a mess. Sorry, baby. Hopefully they'll catch this person soon. Mm-hmm. But let's forget about all that. How about we order that pizza now, and then we can watch a terrible movie? A terrible movie? Why can't we watch a good movie? Well, because I wasn't actually planning on watching the movie. If you catch my drift. Hmm, I might have an idea of what you're talking about. Terrible movie it is. Hello, Station Nation. City Center Express, bound for City Center Station. Doors will close in five minutes. Hey, it's Ms. Running Late. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm on time today, though. Uh, thanks again for holding the train for me last night. <laughs> Don't thank me. I was ready to leave you behind. Dan is the one to thank. Dan? The engineer. He's the one that drives the train. Oh, I see. And you are... Garrett. I'm the conductor. Well, it's nice to meet you, Garrett. I'm Rosalind. Uh, please pass my thanks along to Dan? I will, but he's probably already forgotten all about you. Um, okay. <laughs> oh, it's nothing personal. Dan just isn't really a fan of people. Probably why he stays up in the locomotive most of the time. I can understand that. 
I'm not a big fan of people either. Working in retail for over a decade tends to change your opinion on the masses. I wouldn't know. Worked with the CCC most of my life. You like it then? Yeah. I mean, sometimes the job can be stressful. You wouldn't believe the amount of times people get into fights over their seats. But otherwise, it's a relatively easy gig. Pay is good. People fight over seats? Oh yeah. Screaming matches, fist fights. I got punched once. That was something. Over a seat? Ah, that's Dan. Time to get the train rolling. You going to be on the last train again tonight? Yeah, that's the plan anyways. I'll see you tonight then. Dan and I usually chat at the benches in the station before departure. Maybe you'll be able to thank him then? Yeah, sounds good. Don't be late. I won't. God, Christ, Dan! Have some patience! <sighs> Better get going, Rosalind. Bye, Garrett. The shift dragged on, didn't it? <sighs> yeah. I am ready to go home and take a nice long bath. Too bad you got that long transit ride home. Mm, don't remind me. Today is the first day that I'm regretting moving so far away from work. Well, just think about how nice that bath is going to feel once you do get home. Mm, I guess so. Oh, hey, are you coming to the staff meeting on Sunday? Uh, they did say it was mandatory. Frustrating that it's on one of my days off, though. Right? Ugh, mine too. Like, why can't they just schedule it on a weekday when the majority of us are working? Ugh, so annoying. Well, with any luck, maybe we will get a raise. <laughs> a raise? Oh, that would take a miracle. I don't know. We've been working pretty hard lately, and this meeting came out of nowhere. Maybe it's a way to thank us. You're a little bit of a dreamer, aren't you? Eh, maybe a bit. Oh, sorry. One second. Don't worry. I'll finish up. Thanks. Hey, Marcus. What's up? Hi. Um, are you still at work? Yeah, we're just closing up. Is everything okay? Uh, yeah. Everything's fine. I'm just calling to let you know that I'll be home late. I have to take some samples to the lab. There's still some leftover pizza and the spaghetti in the fridge. Uh, are you going to be okay on your own? Yeah, of course. You do what you have to do. I'll be perfectly fine. In fact, a nice quiet night would do me good. <laughs> Don't get too excited that I won't be home. <laughs> you know I love you, Marcus, but I also enjoy some me time. Me time, huh? <laughs> Uh, get your mind out of the gutter, you perv. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I said nothing. Mm-hmm. Sure. <laughs> okay. I gotta go. But I'll see you later tonight. Of course. Love you. Love you, too. Bye. Love you. Oh, cut it out. I wouldn't be your friend if I didn't make fun of you. Does that mean I get to poke fun at you when you finally get a significant other? Hell yeah. I'd be disappointed if you didn't. Hmm. Good to know. Shop is all shut down. Ready to go home and have that hot bath? <laughs> you bet. Let's get out of here. Yo, Rosalind. You're actually early? Hi, Garrett. This is her, Dan. Her? The woman who wanted to thank you for waiting last night. Oh, right. Yeah. Don't worry about it. I appreciate it, though. If I miss this train, I have quite a long transit with multiple connections. So you saved me a lot of time. Um, yeah. It, it's honestly nothing. You weren't that late, so it wasn't a big deal. Well, still, thank you. You're welcome. So, you just got off work? Yeah, about 30 minutes ago. What do you do? Oh, I just work at a used bookstore. Nothing as exciting as driving a train. You like books? Yeah, curling up in bed with a book on a rainy day. Oh, nothing beats that. I agree. What sort of books do you like to read? Um, well, I tend to read fantasy. Uh, how about you? Nonfiction, mainly history. Ugh, book nerds. <laughs> Would you rather we talk about sports? Or the newest mobile game you've been playing? Honestly, yeah. Anything is better than books. Then why don't you go do your rounds before departure? <gasps> what is this? Dan wants to speak to someone besides me? Oh my, this feeling. 
Is it jealousy? <laughs> it's not often I get to speak to someone else about literature. Maybe if you actually went out and talked to people, you would get to do that more often. I go out. Sure. There's nothing wrong with staying in. It's relaxing. See? She understands. Congratulations. You're both boring. I'm gonna go do my rounds. Have fun talking about which tree makes the best paper. I apologize on his behalf. He's a bit of a jokester, but he's a good guy. I know Garrett already told you, but allow me to introduce myself properly. My name is Dan. It's a pleasure to meet you. Rosalind. It's nice to meet you too, Dan. You're new, aren't you? Mm, new? The train. You just recently started taking it. Oh, yeah. I uh, moved to Port Vikram a little over three months ago, but I'm surprised you knew that I only recently started taking the train. I'm just one face out of many. When you see the same people ten times a week, for months on end, you tend to notice new faces. Well, you're better with faces than I am, then. <laughs> well, I, um, look forward to seeing yours again. Uh, thank you. That's very kind of you to say. This bookstore of yours, what is it called? Uh, it's, um, b between the pages? I've heard of it, but have never been. I'll have to stop by sometime. Check it out. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a nice little place. Quiet. It's kind of weird, actually. The store? No, the quiet. It's like people think it's a library and they can't make any noise. Sometimes I just want to scream to see people's reactions. I'd imagine they would be quite startled. <laughs> yeah, I bet they would be. I unfortunately do have to get things ready for departure now, so I'll have to excuse myself from this conversation. But it was nice chatting, albeit briefly. Right, yes, it was great meeting you, officially. Will I see you tomorrow? Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Until tomorrow. Bye. Cute, right? I guess so. Oh, come on. You're into her. Don't lie. What makes you think that? Gee, I don't know. Maybe because you were actually interested in talking to her? I can speak to people without being interested in them, you know. I don't know. There was something about the way you looked at her. A sort of twinkle in your eye. There was no twinkle. <laughs> Please. It was like a motherfucking field of stars in those beady eyes of yours. Have I ever told you how much I dislike you? Only a few times each day for the last three years. And yet you still proceed to bother me. Please. You love the attention. There you go again, presuming I like things. Well, there's one thing I know you like. Being on time. So hop to it and check over that engine. Marcus? Hey. <laughs> Sorry. I was trying not to wake you. What time is it? Uh, just after three. Three? Why are you home so late? And why are you soaking wet? I, why don't you go back to bed? I'll tell you in the morning. Is, is everything okay? It's fine, sweetie. My car broke down and I had to walk the rest of the way home in the rain. What? What? Why didn't you call me? Phone died and I left my charger here. Oh, I'm sorry, Marcus. You must be freezing. Why don't you climb into bed and I'll warm you up? I... Actually, I'm gonna take a quick shower, but I'll be there soon. You get some sleep, okay? Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, hey, uh, did you get that test you wanted done? Uh, test? The sample that you were taking to the lab. You were running tests on it tonight, right? I... sort of, uh... I was just comparing it to older samples, looking for changes, pH levels, toxins... Uh, basic stuff. And that had to be done tonight? Are... <laughs> Are you implying something, Rose? No, sorry, I'm... I'm just tired. We'll talk tomorrow. Good night. Good night. I love you. 
Love you too. Ah, sorry, sorry. I know I'm late. <laughs> it's okay. Mobile order for Stacy. I'll be right back. Yeah. I will take a. Let's see. Let's go for a medium mocha with no whip. Stacy. <sighs> Thanks. Oh, that's hot. Um, do you have any of those sleeve thingies? Yes, yeah, just over there on the counter. Ah, perfect. Thanks. Ah, <sighs> so. Did you hear the news? Uh, another body was found this morning. I know. Is everything alright, hon? You look pale. If I tell you something, will you promise not to say anything to anyone? Yes, of course. I know it's crazy, but the timing is something that I can't ignore. Rose, hun. What are you talking about? Okay, listen. These murders started happening how long ago? About three months ago? Right. The same time I moved here. Okay. So, wait. Are, are you saying you are the Red River Reaper? No, of course not. But listen to this. Marcus tells me that he has to work late last night. He doesn't get home until three and is drenched when he does get home. Says the car broke down and he got caught in the rain. So, you're saying you think... I don't know. It can't be, right? But then I heard the news this morning about a fourth victim and... It can't be Marcus, hon. There's no way. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, God, what am I thinking? It is odd timing, though. I, I can see why that thought would cross your mind. The more we talk about it, the more ridiculous it sounds. I mean, Marcus refuses to kill spiders that wander into the house. There's no way he'd be capable of murder. If it would make you feel better, I can look into his whereabouts last night. What? Well, if the car broke down, he would have had to call a tow truck service to pick it up this morning, right? I can follow up on that, make sure he wasn't lying. No, no. <laughs> That's not necessary. I was just a little freaked out, but talking about it gave me clarity. Has this happened before? What do you mean? Has Marcus been out late before? No, not that I can remember. But please, forget I said anything. It was stupid of me to even think it. Of course. Consider it forgotten. Oh, and please don't tell Marcus I suspected him. I'll never live that down. Your secret is safe with me, hun. Thanks. I really hate to take off since you just got here, but I do need to get back to work. It's okay. I was late, so don't you even worry about it. I got to see your beautiful face and got a coffee. Well worth the trip. <laughs> uh, I'll talk to you soon, Stace. Safe trip home, hon. Hey, Detective Turling? Y yeah I, I have someone I need you to look into. First name, Marcus. Last name, Wagner. Yo, Dan, can you put my bag in the cubby? Sure, toss it over. It's heavy. <laughs> what the hell is in this? Bought some new weights on my break. Couldn't you have done that on your day off? What's the big deal? Once it's in the cupboard, we don't have to worry about it until we're off the clock. The cupboard isn't meant for personal effects. Eh, whatever. It's not like we use it for anything else. Excuse me. Is anyone there? Hmm? Who's that? Huh. There's a couple of cops outside. Cops? I'll go find out what they want. Hi there. What can I do for you? Hello. I'm Detective Parker, and this is my partner, Detective Turling. Do you mind if we ask you some questions? About what? Is there anyone else in the train car with you? Yeah, the engineer's here as well. I'm gonna need to speak with both of you. Yo, Dan. They want to talk to us. Why? Don't know. But better come out before they come charging in. Thank you for your cooperation. I'm Detective Parker, and this is Detective Turling. We just have a few questions for you, if you don't mind. Questions about what? First, can we get your names? 
Garrett Graves. Daniel Smith. Thank you. Have you heard about the recent killings? Who hasn't? You're the detectives on the Reaper case. We are. Okay. And how can we help? How long have you two worked for the, uh, the City Center Express? Over ten years now. About six years. Do you recognize any of these three women? Those are the victims of the killings. Correct. But do you remember seeing them on the train? Do you see those cars? Each train car is two levels. The top level holds 160 people, the bottom level another 100. That's 260 people per train, five cars, that's over a thousand people per train, and we do 10 trips a day. So that's a no. That's a no. Sorry, but we see so many faces a day, they all sort of blend together. May I ask what this is about? Do you think the CCE has some sort of connection to the murders? Just covering all our bases. One of the victims used this train quite frequently, and we were hoping to figure out if she had a specific seat or if she ever had any confrontations with other passengers. I'm up in the locomotive, so I don't have much interaction with the passengers. And you, Mr. Graves? I remember people that caused trouble on my train, but none of these women look familiar. I'm sorry, I couldn't be of more help. It's okay. It was a long shot anyways. Here's my card. If you remember anything, or if someone else comes forward with any information, please give us a call. Sure thing. Please let us know if there's anything else we can do to help. Thanks for your time. If we have any further questions, we would really appreciate your continued cooperation. Of course. Thank you. Good luck, detectives. Hey, guys. Hey, my favorite late gal. I was only late once. Yeah, but that's how we formed our new beautiful friendship. It's how I will always remember you. That's not exactly how I want to be remembered. I'm going to start getting things ready for departure. Already? Enjoy your chat. Wait, Dan. Is everything okay? I didn't interrupt something, did I? No, it's just... Uh, well, those two that were just talking to us, they were detectives on the Reaper case. Wait, really? What did they want? Apparently, one of the victims took this train. Seriously? Yeah, but so do 10,000 other people. They must have absolutely no idea who is killing these women if they are talking to us. Yeah. You okay? Hmm? You went away for a moment. Oh, uh, I'm fine. Sorry. Just a lot on my mind. I'll walk you to your seat. Sure, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> I'll be right back. Take your time. Hey, don't worry. The train is safe. There's way too many people around for the killer to do anything. I know. That's not actually what I was thinking about. Oh? What were you thinking about then? Just... Uh, how do the police figure out who the killer is? What do you mean? Do they rely on people stepping forward with clues? Do they wait for the killer to slip up? A little bit of both, maybe. Ugh, I don't know. I guess we just have to hope the killer fucks up or someone steps forward with pivotal information. And we gotta hope they do it soon. Yeah. Is everything okay, babe? You're so quiet tonight. I'm okay. You don't seem okay. Wait. Are you still upset that I got home so late last night? I I'm not upset because you came home late. Then what? What are you mad about? Why did you have to check those samples last night? Huh? Why last night? Why couldn't you have done the test today? I... 
Can you turn that off, please? In an interview from earlier today, Detective Parker had this. <sighs> please, talk to me, Rose. What is going on in that head of yours? It's just weird that you were at the lab so late. And the car just happened to break down on the same night? Are you accusing me of lying? Yeah, I guess so. Why would I lie to you about that? I don't know, Marcus. Why don't you tell me? I'm not lying. Then tell me why you went to the lab so late. I can't believe you don't trust me. What do you think I was doing? What do you think I was doing, Rosalind? Forget it. No. Tell me. What, do, do you think I was cheating on you? Damn it, Rosalind. Answer me. You work along the river, Marcus. Yeah? And? Wait. <laughs> you're not... You're not suggesting what I think you are. Are you? You don't honestly believe I'm capable of such heinous acts, do you? No, I... I don't know. What am I supposed to think, Marcus? You're out late, and the next day there's another body. <laughs> Unbelievable! I can't... <laughs> I can't believe this! Do you trust me so little? If you could just tell me why you... No! Fuck you, Rosalind. <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say to you right now. Marcus, wait. No, 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 no. I got to get out of here. Where are you going? Oh, gee, I don't know. Maybe I'll go out and kill some women tonight, since that's apparently what you think I do when I'm not home. That's not funny. No, it's not, Rosalind. And you know what else isn't funny? Having your girlfriend accuse you of being a goddamn serial killer. Marcus, wait! Can we talk about this? No. I... I need some time to think. What, when will you be back? I... I don't know, Rosalind. I don't know. Rose? Stacy? Hon, are you crying? I... I think I did something stupid. Oh, Han, what happened? I, I questioned Marcus. Oh, you didn't, Han. You should have waited for me. Waited? I know you told me not to bother looking into Marcus, but you know I just can't help myself. So I, I reached out to a contact at the police department, and not only were they able to pull up his phone's GPS to corroborate his story, but she also informed me that the reason he was at the lab last night was because the police department wanted him to analyze their samples. Huh? I'm not supposed to reveal too much of what my source told me, but Marcus is probably the person that knows that river the best. They were hoping that he might be able to figure out where the bodies are being dumped to help narrow down the search. But, but why didn't he tell me that? Because he isn't allowed to. It's an ongoing investigation. But, but you're telling me? I wasn't going to tell you the whole story, but you had to go off and tell Marcus your suspicions. Just don't say anything to anyone, and don't tell anyone that I told you. Otherwise, I'll lose my source. Uh, what? What do I do now? Well... I suggest calling Marcus and apologizing. He's, he said he wanted some time to think. Listen, just call him. He'll either pick up or let it go to voicemail. If he picks up, you can apologize. If not, leave a message. Either way, he'll listen to you when he's ready. Right. Yeah. I'll, I'll do that. Don't worry, hun. It'll be okay. Thank you. Have a good night, hun. Hey, you've reached Marcus. 
I'm probably out in the middle of nowhere with no service. So, you know, leave me a message and I'll call you back ASAP. Marcus, uh, it's, it's me. I'm so sorry, Marcus. I, I should have trusted you. I, I don't know what I was thinking. Please, come home so we can talk. I love you. <laughs> And he hasn't called you back? Nope. Two days of silence. Damn, Ross, that's rough. I'm sorry. I guess I can't blame him. It was a pretty big fight, and I said some stupid things. Still, you've been together for almost ten years now. I can't imagine whatever you said was bad enough to just throw that away. Well... Uh... Dang. What the heck did you say? Nothing. I... I don't want to talk about it. Fine, don't tell me. I'll just have to let my imagination run wild. You do that. Ugh. What time is it? I feel like I've been waiting for this staff meeting to start for hours. Uh, yeah. You did arrive two hours early. Yeah, well, it was lonely at home without Marcus. I'm sure he'll be back. Maybe he just went away for the weekend? Yeah, maybe. Hello! Welcome to Between the Pages! Dan? Rosalind? What, what are you doing here? This is where I work, remember? Oh, I know, but I thought you worked weekdays. I specifically came on a day you wouldn't be here, so it didn't seem, you know, creepy. You two know each other? Yeah, we met recently. You didn't have to come on one of my days off, Dan. We're friends now. I didn't want to presume. Well, now you don't have to presume, because you know. And since you're here, allow me to show you the nonfiction section. Thank you. Where can I find the true crime section? We don't have too much for history, but there's quite a lot of mythology right now, if that's of any interest to you. There was a large flux of myth books donated now that people lost interest in that show about the mythical creatures. Mythology is interesting. Great! Then I'm sure you'll find something. Uh, let's see. Political science is here, and these two shelves are what we have for history. Are you working today? Um, no, I'm just here for a staff meeting that starts once the store is closed. If you aren't working, then you should go relax with your coworker. I can find things on my own. I, I honestly don't mind helping. Besides, I hang out with her like five times a week. <laughs> uh, I want to use this opportunity to talk to you a bit more. I see. How did you end up getting here? The train doesn't run today. The subway? That's quite the trek, especially on a Sunday. It must have taken you nearly two hours to get here. Uh, about that, yeah. And how are you getting home? Uh, same way. Would you like a ride? No, I couldn't possibly ask you to drive me all the way home. Oh, I didn't drive. Actually, sorry, I should have clarified. Do you want to split a ride share? I'll even have them drop me off first so you don't have to tell me where you live. Oh, I... Uh, where do you live? Portheim. And you're in Port Vikram, right? Yeah, that's right. Then it makes sense to share a Schuber. Are you sure? The fare from Portheim to Vikram would be around the same price as the transit, but the drive will take a third of the time. You help me find a book to buy, and I'll help you get home quicker. Deal. Another reading that could have been an email. Yeah, but we got our raises. Yeah, ten whole cents. Hey, it'll add up. Besides, it's better than nothing, right? I suppose that's true. But now that the meeting is over, I can finally ask. Who was the guy you were chatting with earlier? The one who bought the mythology book? Dan? He's just a friend. Okay, but he's really cute, and I think he likes you. What? No, we just met a handful of days ago. Yeah, but you didn't see the way he was looking at you when your back was turned. It was almost... primal. He wants you, Ross. He wants you bad. Stop. He doesn't. You should probably make it clear you aren't interested. Otherwise, he might get his hopes up. You don't think... He isn't actually interested in me, right? You're just pulling my leg. I'm not! But also, if you break his heart, please feel free to give him my number. I'll keep that in mind. 
I'm actually getting a ride home with him. Girl, you are not getting into that man's car alone, are you? Of course not. We're taking a ride share. And he already told me that he's gonna be dropped off first. <gasps> Handsome and a gentleman. Hook me up. <laughs> I'll put in a good word for you. Oh, here he comes. Oh, look at the way he carries himself. Oh, that swagger. Yes, hello, Mr. Smoking Hot. <laughs> Stop it! God, it's been so long since I've gotten any. <laughs> okay, I don't need to hear about that, thanks. Hey, you all set? Yeah. Looks like the Schubert should be here in ten minutes or so. Did you want to grab anything from the cafe down the street while we wait? Uh, yeah. Sounds good. Oh, by the way, this is my coworker, Vanessa. Vanessa, this is Dan. You get her home safely or else I'm going to have to punish you. Oh, Vanessa, please don't. Don't worry, I'll make sure she gets home safely. Text me when you get home? Of course. Is your bag heavy? Nah, it's not too bad. Though I wasn't expecting to buy quite so many books. You made all of them sound so interesting. Sorry. No, don't apologize. I have a lot of things to read now. That's never a bad thing. I guess the trip over to the shop was worth it then? It was. I'm glad. I'd feel terrible if you came all the way out here and didn't find a single book you wanted. I can always find something that interests me. <sighs> Speaking of catching interest, this is going to sound sort of ridiculous, and I hope you aren't offended. But my co-worker, Vanessa, she is sort of interested in you. Ah, uh, I'm flattered, but I'm not looking for a relationship right now. Right, yeah, no, it's... Totally fine. My apologies to your friend. Ugh, she'll be fine. She basically hits on every good-looking guy that comes into the shop. So, I'm good-looking? Ah, uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Thank you. That's the first time anyone has told me that. Really? I don't talk to a lot of women, and when I do, they aren't usually complimenting me. Well, you are. Uh, attractive, I mean. Thank you. You know, I've never met a woman like you before, Rosalind. You're sure something special. Nah, I'm pretty basic. <laughs> uh, give me a pumpkin spice latte any day and I'll gladly accept. Alright, I'll go grab you one. You wait here for the shooter. No wait, Dan, you, you don't have to. I don't have to, but I want to. I'll be right back. Oh, I really hope I didn't give him the wrong idea. Oh, maybe Vanessa was right. I should let him know I'm with Marcus. Though, he did say he wasn't looking for a relationship, so maybe he was just being nice. Mm, still, I guess I should try to casually bring up the fact that I have a boyfriend. <sighs> One who won't talk to me. Hey, you've reached Marcus. I'm probably out in the middle of nowhere with no service. So, you know, leave me a message and I'll call you back ASAP. Hey, it's me again. I know you said you wanted some space, and I respect that. I just want to say I fucked up. I know I did. And if you don't want to talk to me ever again, I'd understand. I'd be devastated, but I would get it. I just... Uh, ugh, sorry. This isn't really giving you space, is it? Um, I, I hope you're okay, and I hope to hear back from you soon. Okay, I lo... Uh, bye. Are you alright? Yes. Well, honestly, no. I, I got into a fight with my boyfriend a couple nights ago. Want me to kill him for you? What? No. God, no. Ah, uh, sorry. That joke was probably in poor taste considering current events. Uh, maybe a bit. <sighs> the fight was my fault, and I haven't heard back from him at all. I'm starting to get worried. I'm sure he's okay. Yeah, you're, you're probably right. That wasn't just a casual way of letting me know you are taken, was it? No, I actually did get into an argument with Marcus, and, uh... You didn't hear me talking to myself, did you? 
Hmm? No, I was only teasing. Right! <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, Vanessa filled my head with things. She said you were interested in me. I am. You are? Yeah, you're exactly my type. But don't worry, like I said before, I have no desire to form a relationship. Uh, I see. That doesn't make you uncomfortable, does it? No, not at all. It's uh, flattering. Good. I would hate to scare you away. That's all right. Thanks again for letting me ride with you. Of course. It's dangerous for women like you to be transiting alone at night. After you. Thank you. And after a year of working the Lovell Cove route, I was transferred to City Center. Why did you switch? It sounds like you really like the coastal route. I loved it, but the City Center line has more trips per day, which meant more money, and more money brings about new opportunities. Opportunities? Weekend getaways, mostly. Like a trip out to the island, or do you actually fly places? I have a few places I like to visit. There's some great hiking trails not too far away. Not many people know about them either, so it's nice and quiet. Oh, that sounds lovely. You know, you would get along nicely with my friend Stacy. She loves doing hikes in remote places. But you don't? It's not that I don't enjoy it. I just work a lot, and my weekends are usually doing all the chores and errands that I couldn't do during the week. That's no way to live life, Rosalind. Don't waste the time you have left simply going through the motions. You should indulge in your desires every now and then. <laughs> now you really sound like Stacy. Well, she sounds like a smart woman then. I think this is the first stop. This is me. Wait, you own this place? Yes. My friends and I love this place. You always have such great decorations during Halloween and Christmas. Halloween in particular. I, um, tend to get carried away. Yo, you got an address for the second place? Oh, right, sorry. I'll input that now. I guess this is goodbye then. Yeah, it... It was really nice talking to you. Yeah, it was nice. See you tomorrow? Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget to call your friend and let her know you got home safely. Will do. Bye, Rosalind. Bye, Dan. All set, miss? Yes, thank you. Oh my god, tell me everything. <laughs> Hello to you, too. Did he invite you inside? What? No. Besides, I'm with Marcus. Are you? He hasn't spoken to you in two days. If I were you, I would have followed Dan inside and ridden that stick until the sun came up. Vanessa! Oh, I bet he's big. <laughs> Can you not? Uh, so, I was just calling because, well, you know that big house on the corner in Portheim? The one with the insane decorations? Yeah? That's his place. What? <laughs> no way. He must be loaded, God. How could he be any more perfect? Did you get me his number? Uh, no. Sorry. He isn't interested in dating right now. Damn it! Our hot, rich boyfriend is exactly what I need! <laughs> uh, Are you home now? Almost. Five minutes away. Okay, well, text me when you get there. I will. Later, Gator. <laughs> bye bye Hey, Dan! Rosalind? How did you get in here? Uh, through the gate? It was wide open. God damn it, Garrett. I swear that guy has the memory span to that of a goldfish. What are you doing here so early? Next trip isn't for another 40 minutes. Oh, damn it. I left work early hoping to beat Marcus home. Did he finally get back to you? Yeah, he sent me a text saying he'd be home tonight to talk. That's good news. It is. But now I have nothing to do for 40 minutes. Well, Garrett is still on break, so I'm here alone, also with nothing to do. Why don't you come sit with me in the locomotive? It's warm in there, so we won't have to sit in the cool autumn air. Am I allowed to be in there? Hmm, not really, but I'll make an exception for you. Really? I have to admit I've always wondered what the front of the train looks like. Here, let me help you. It's quite the step up. Thank you. It's kind of small in here. It doesn't have to be big. It's mainly just me that comes in here. What about Garrett? He mainly walks the cars to keep an eye on the passengers. 
The only time he comes up here is when we take the train to the yard for the evening and all of the passengers are gone. And that's where you two get off? Mm-hmm. Is it very far from Portheim? It's a little ways, just near the source of Red River. The source of Red <laughs> Just relax and take a deep breath, Rosalind. Don't fight it. Let yourself drift off to sleep. Shh. That's it. That's it. Good girl. You're here so early, though. Best to give you a nice big sedative. Hopefully, you aren't allergic. All right, Rosalind. Which do you prefer? Left arm or right arm? Left arm? You got it. Such a good girl. Not even a flinch. Now, I'm going to put you in this cabinet here. Don't worry. There's lots of space. But if you need anything, you just knock on the door. Oh, and don't you worry about your bag and phone. I'll make sure it's hidden in a great spot. Oh, Rosalind, we are going to have so much fun tonight. I have a special treat for you. Yo, Danny boy, I got us some coffee. Thanks, but I still need to grab some lunch. What? Man, you should have just come with me. I wasn't hungry then. But you are now. Yeah, I've got a craving for some wings. But the wing place is a 15 minute drive away. So we'll grab a taxi. No one takes taxis anymore, man. Uh, I'll order us a Schubert. Great, thanks. You're bringing your backpack with you? Why don't you toss it in the cubby in the locomotive? There's hardly anything in it. Just some trash I need to get rid of. Suit yourself. All right, let's get to the pickup zone. There's already a car waiting. Lead the way. Mm. Oh, are you finally awake? You know, I was going to wait a little longer before inviting you over for an intimate evening. But then you came strolling up to me, like a lost lamb wandering into the wolf's den. And I just couldn't resist. Where... where am I? The train yard. Don't bother screaming, there's only one security guard and he's a lazy asshole that stares at the monitors all night instead of patrolling. You're the Red River Reaper. That's what they call me this year. I've also been called the Cove Killer and Mountain Murderer. Honestly, Red River Reaper is my favorite so far. Has such a nice ring to it. You're gonna kill me. Oh, don't worry. You still have a few more hours before that happens. First, we're going to get to know one another. Inside and out. Please, let me go. Why do people always ask me this? Do you think it's going to work? That I'm going to magically change my mind and let you go? Please, don't waste our precious time together with futile begging. Why are you doing this? Killing in general? Because it's fun. You can't possibly understand the thrill of knowing you hold someone else's life in your hands. To feel their last breath on your face as you squeeze the life out of them is glorious. You're sick. No! I'm just giving in to the urges that are within all of us. You're the only one with the desire to kill here. Now, Rosalind, don't lie to me. If I were to undo these chains, freeing you, you would try to end my life. I wouldn't, because I'm not a sicko like you. I'd run. <laughs> And I would chase, I would catch you, and you would fight. You'd struggle beneath me, desperately searching for a weapon. A weapon you could use to strike and kill me. That's different. Not so different. You'd feel no guilt because society deemed it acceptable to murder as long as you were defending yourself. You'd take my life and you would enjoy it. You would always remember the power you felt in that moment. Maybe even begin to crave it. I wouldn't. You can't know that for sure. Is that what happened to you? Hmm, I see what you're doing here. Trying to get to know me so you can find some sort of weakness or way to convince me to let you go. It won't work. 
That wasn't what I was doing. Mm-hmm. Sure. All right. I'll play along. My first kill was in high school. There was a jock who made my life a living. Hell, he thought it would be funny to drag me out into the middle of the woods and leave me there all night, blindfolded and bound to a tree. When he was tying the ropes, I managed to knee him in the face. He flinched. It was only for a brief moment. But that was all I needed. I lurched forward, knocking him over, and before I even knew it, I was crushing his skull with a rock. His blood felt hot against my skin that winter eve. It was euphoric. <laughs> and what happened after that? After? I buried his body, then walked home. What are you doing? I'm not doing anything. Nice try. Here I was trying to be kind by not making these metal cuffs too tight. And you betray my trust. How about we keep your hands where I can see them? And we will tighten these cuffs. This is on you, Rosalind. If you had behaved, then this would have been relatively painless for you. But now I'm annoyed and don't want to talk anymore. Wait, please. I'll, I'll be good. It's too late, Rosalind. You had your chance. Hmm, let's see. What should we start with today? Removal of fingernails? Pulling out some teeth? Oh, God. Help! I already told you not to scream. You are testing my patience, Rosalind. Please, Dad. Please, let me go. I, I promise I won't tell anyone about this. Oh, Rosie, how can you expect me to trust you when you have already broken my trust twice? I won't tell anyone who you are. I swear it. Hmm, how about this? I will let you go after I gouge out your eyes, cut out your tongue, burst your eardrums, and chop off your hands and feet. Does that sound agreeable? Oh, this, this isn't real. This, this can't be happening. All right. How about we get those clothes off so I can take a look at my canvas? No. 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 <laughs> Please, please don't. Relax. I have some compassion, Rosalind. Scissors. Where are the... Ah! Here they are. You really are beautiful, Rosalind. Such smooth skin. Don't touch me! Hmm, do you know why this is my favorite kill spot, Rosalind? <laughs> no. It's my favorite spot because there are so many interesting things just lying about for me to use on you. I have really grown fond of railroad spikes. They impale flesh and bones so easily. Shall I show you? No! No! Please, no! Since you were so keen to use those hands of yours, why don't we render them useless? No, 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 no! Brace yourself. This is going to hurt a lot. <laughs> Come on, Rosie, don't you pass out on me? We are just getting started. Rosalind, 
Are you home? Rose? The number you have dialed cannot be completed at this time. Please hang up and try again later. Uh, that's weird. Rosalind, where are you? Stacy here. Hey, Stacy, it's Marcus. I know, sweetie, I do have a call display. Right, um, listen, have you heard from Rosalind today? Today? No? I can't get through to her phone. It says her number's unavailable. Really? That's odd. Let me try. Hang on. Come on, Rosalind. Where are you? Marcus? Uh, yeah. You're right. Wouldn't connect. Uh, when was the last time you heard from her? A few nights ago, she called me after your fight. I'm assuming you two haven't talked since then. She told you about that? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Who else was she going to talk to about it? Uh, um, did she say anything about going out after work? Nope. She was pretty distressed. Could only think about you and how bad she hurt you. Uh, I'm going to call her work. Okay. Let me know if you manage to get a hold of her. Yeah. You know, Rosalind, I really do like you. You're an intelligent woman. Kind. Probably too kind since you ended up in this situation. Maybe I should just make this quick. Would you like that? Go. Go? Go where? Go. Fuck yourself. <laughs> you scream again, I will kill your friends at work, and then I'll find out where you live and slowly skin your precious Marcus alive. <laughs> Fuck. Are you going to scream and be the reason why your friends die? No. Stay quiet. Hello? Is someone in there? Damn it, Garrett. This area is off limits. R Rosalind? Hang on, I'll, I'll get you out of there. Thank you. Huh? <laughs> Damn. Why the hell did you come here, you dimwit? Fuck! The security guard is going to see your car and come over here, you know. You've ruined everything, Garrett. He's dead. You're a monster. Do you think I wanted to do that? That's not how I kill. I got no joy out of that. And now I need to figure out how I'm going to make this work. I can't dump his body in the river. The moment the police find him, suspicion will be cast in my direction. Hmm. Think, Dan. Think! That's it. Garrett, buddy! You are going to disappear, and the Red River Reaper killings will end with Rosalind. I'll have to find a new location to work and dump bodies. But starting over is always exciting. How can you do this? He, he was your friend! Here's the thing about people, Rosie. We are all replaceable. The CCE will hire a new conductor. We will become friends, and Garrett will be forgotten. Even you, Rosalind. You will die, and your darling Marcus will move on. He will fall in love with someone else, and it will be as though you had never existed. That's not true. It is. If you truly believe it's not, then you're more naive than I thought. Marcus loves me. He might move on, Drew, but he would never forget me. Oh, Rosie, 
Sweet, sweet <laughs> rosy posy. I never said he'd forget you. Hell, no one will forget about you, Rosalind. You're going to be famous. The last victim of the Red River Reaper. They are going to make documentaries about you. They will study you in schools. We are going to be immortal. Oh, oh. I should thank you. <laughs> should I weep at your feet and sing your praises, you insane fucking... Now, Rosalind, I don't appreciate facetiousness. Nor do we have time for this. As much as I would love to spend more time together, I now have an uninvited guest to attend to. So I suppose this is farewell. Wait! No! I was here! What are you talking about? I, I was here when you walked in and saved me from Garrett. Red River Reaver. I can I can support your story. Hmm. That's honestly not a bad idea. Unfortunately, I don't trust you. I just know that one day you're going to break my heart. <laughs> no, 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 no! <laughs> <laughs> Did you really think I'd kill you with a railroad spike? Please. Though the police are incompetent, they would eventually figure out the murder weapon. No, no, sweet Rosie. I always cut the throat of my victims at the riverbed. Less cleaning to do. Well, ready to go? No! I gotta get back here quickly to clean up Garrett's mess. Fuck you! Come on! <laughs> Your legs work just fine. Get up and move it! You want me to move? Make me! I'm getting angry, Rosalind. I have done nothing to deserve your ire, so I would appreciate it if you would cooperate here because you really don't want to make an enemy of me. Now, MOVE! <laughs> How many? How many what? How many women have you killed? You'll be my 17th kill. But I don't just kill women. You see, the problem with most serial killers is they are creatures of habit. They have a type. They kill the same way. Eventually, they get complacent in their routine, and that leads to mistakes. But me? I'm an experimenter. I enjoy reinventing myself, trying new things. That way, things never get boring and I don't make mistakes. You made a mistake tonight. I did not. You left my legs mobile. <laughs> you can't run from me, Rosalind. No matter where you go, I'm going to find you. I can hear you. Fuck, 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 fuck. I told you this would happen. You ran, I chased. And look at you now, looking for a rock to hit me with. There, to your right. Pick it up. Hit me! Kill me! Make your choice, Rosalind! <laughs> <laughs> See? I told you you'd strike. Mm. You're going to have to hit me a lot harder than that to kill me, though. I wasn't trying to kill you. And that is your mistake of the evening. Hey! Who are you? <laughs> Marcus! Oh, Marcus, are you real? Are you here? I'm here. I'm here. How did you find 
me. The water samples the police took from the bodies. There was diesel oil inside of it. Looking at what was along the river, this was the most obvious location for the killer to be dumping the bodies. And when you weren't at home, I, I knew something was wrong. <laughs> oh, Marcus. I'm so sorry. Shh, shh. I know, baby. I know. Come on. Let's get you to the hospital. We, we have to call the police. I, I already did. They're on... Marcus? Marcus? Marcus, Marcus! There's nowhere to go, Rosalind. Marcus! He's dead, you bitch! Just like you're about to be. Get back here! <laughs> Fuck! You let her get away! You fucking piece of shit! This is all your fault! Fuck you, Marcus! Fuck you! <sighs> I'll get you, Rosalind. No one ever escapes. It's clear. Blood is still warm. Wait. Isn't this the conductor from the other day? Gareth? Garrett, I believe. And yeah, it is. So we're looking for the engineer. Dennis, over there. There's a phone. Hmm, that's odd. It's not even password protected. I didn't think phones allowed you to do that anymore. Well, look at this model. It's ancient. I'm so surprised it works. Anything useful? There's three voicemails. Play them. Hey, Dan. It's me, Gare Bear. Yo, have you left work already? I forgot my non-work lucky hat there, and uh, I was hoping you could possibly grab it and bring it back to your place, because uh, game starts in about an hour, and I really need my hat, because I'm like I've told you already, any time they lose, it's when I don't have my hat, and you know, any time I've lost it before, I've always been looking around for it, and then my wings are in the oven, and then they're overdone, and the smoke alarm starts going off, and I gotta air out my... God, sorry, I know I'm garbage at leaving you messages. Yeah, so, um, totally cool if you didn't grab it. I can just stop by the train yard later and grab it myself. I hope I can make it back because I still gotta feed Oscar, as well as get my wings in the oven and gotta, you know, kinda get the juju flowing before the game actually starts. And, you know, always gotta be on the sofa in the right spot. Okay. Three for three. We'll, we'll make it like this. Um, I've got my message across. So, love you. Bye. Wait, love you. God. Idiot. Oof, poor bastard should have just waited till the morning. Look, the Schuber app. There's an address from last night. All right. Let's call this in, then head over there. What about Marcus? He said he was coming out here, but there's no sign of him. You're right. I'll go take a look around. You call in the scene and get a team up here. We need to sweep every inch of this room. Yeah. Wait. Be careful, yeah? Killer's probably long gone. Security guard probably scared him off. Yeah. Marcus! Marcus Wagner? Marcus, are you around? Who's there? Show yourself! Marcus! Marcus, if that's you, this isn't funny. Freeze! How does it feel? How does what feel? How does it feel to know that you're about to die? I'm the one with the gun here. Do you know what I hate about guns? They take away all the fun. You shoot, and that's it. It's a coward's weapon. Probably why you pigs love them so much, huh? Unfortunately, I have a woman to find and no time to deal with you cops. So gun it is. I do hope you'll forgive me. Karen! Sleep well now. Shit! Karen! Karen, hang on! Officer down! I repeat, officer down! Need medical assistance immediately! Hang in there, Karen. Hang in there. <sighs> I hate guns. What the fuck is it now?
Rosalind, now this is a surprise. What are you doing in my house? You killed Marcus. Yes, and Garrett, and that lady detective. I've had a rather busy night. So what is it that I can do for you? I'm here to kill you. <laughs> oh, really? You killed Marcus. So you've already told me. I was there. I remember. So, tell me, sweet Rosie, how do you plan on killing me? I thought I might choke the life out of you. See what all that fucking nonsense was you were spouting off about power and breaths on cheeks. That's my girl finally giving in to the desires within. I'm actually rather proud of you. I'm not your girl. You're in no condition to be fighting, Rosalind. Neither are you. Not so fun when you're the one who's in pain, is it? Oh, I don't know. This is still kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't think I've ever had so much fun! you <laughs> so what now you go to prison for a very long long time if it's all the same to you i'd rather just leave town you have to pay for your crime see that's where we disagree so i'm afraid i'm going to have to kill you after all the, the police are probably on their way. Then I'll make it this quick. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Hope you enjoyed your book, you psycho. Sorry, Dan. Looks like your fun is over. It's been two weeks since Detective Parker captured the Red River Reaper, and he has finally agreed to sit down with me for an exclusive interview. We will discuss the events leading up to the Reaper's arrest, and of course, talk about the tragic passing of his partner, Detective Karen Turvin. But first, let's watch a clip from the interview from the woman who managed to avoid the Reaper's glaive, Rosalind Williams. Rosalind, first of all, please accept my deepest condolences for the loss of your longtime boyfriend, Marcus Wagner. I cannot even begin to imagine what this entire situation must have been like for you. It was, uh, well, <laughs> difficult would be an understatement. Uh, hell, Stacey. It, it was hell. It, it still is. Marcus is gone, and nothing I can do will change that. <laughs> I keep wishing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, no. Don't you dare apologize. Do you need a moment? <sighs> no, uh, let's continue before I change my mind about this. Tell us, truthfully, how are you? I feel like, uh, like I'm broken beyond repair. But someone once told me that I had gotten so caught up in the responsibilities of living that I had forgotten how to live. I didn't really understand what she meant by that until that night when, when the Reaper took me. 
Only through facing death was I able to understand what it truly meant to be alive. And I certainly am not going to Are waste any more Are you watching that video again? Life. Hun, you gotta let it go. Move on. It's only been a few weeks, Stacy. I will move on, but I need a little more time. Well, I should thank you for that interview. It's not every day my videos go viral. Well, you might be happy about that, but... I can't go anywhere without people asking me weird questions. People are just curious about you. Uh, speaking of curious, how are things going between you and Detective Parker? Well, really well. I know we've only been dating for a week, but I have a good feeling about him. I'm happy for you, Stace. I really am. What about you? Any plans to get back into the dating scene? No, it's way too soon. I... I think I might actually go on a vacation. Really? You know, I hear Scotland is beautiful this time of year. <laughs> How soon can we leave? I'll have my bags packed tonight. <laughs> Good evening, and thank you for choosing the City Center Express. This is your conductor, Brett, speaking. Doors are now closing, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. All right, Rosalind, a lot of viewers want to know how you feel about the Reaper being incarcerated. Many are saying they would rather see him dead. What are your thoughts on this? Honestly, Stacy, I hope he lives for a long time. I want him to live in a 6x8 box with nothing to do. Let him live each day just simply going through the motions. No way to indulge in desire, no hope of getting out. I want him to spend the rest of his days thinking about the one who got away. The one who took his power. The one who held his life in their hands and had the strength to let go. Starring the voices of Jenna Oliver as Rosalind Williams, Luca Xavier as Dan Smith, Key Garland as Stacy Cameron, Max Adrian Burton as Marcus Wagner, Gerald Hill as Detective Dennis Parker, Melissa J. Lackey as Detective Karen Turling, Roscoe Brayman as Garrett Graves, Emily Evans as Vanessa Burns, Nelson Abrego as Passenger, Avia as News Anchor. Justin Saint as reporter. Rachel Ondang as newscaster. Michael Ignacio Jr. as cafe and bookstore customers. Karenna Foley as barista. Sean Kedzier as Schubert driver. Jackie Gordon as phone operator. Ed Haynes as... Conductor Brett here! Written by Jenna Oliver. Script edited by Carrie Murphy and Roscoe Brayman. A wayward theme written, composed, and performed by Key Garland with music by David Obanini.